So today I'm rolling with it. I am joined by Liv Dawson, a singer songwriter. I'm so excited to have you on the podcast today. Um, I love your music. Thank you very it's much. Fab. Honestly, like I've been binge listening these past couple of days <laughs> and it is a vibe. I'm not going to lie. Um, so how are you? How's lockdown going for you? Good. I feel like this lockdown has definitely been a lot harder than yeah. the last couple but I've, I feel good I've um, been doing loads of zoom sessions and writing loads of music which is you know very motivating in these times so yeah all yeah. good it's so difficult isn't it I feel, I definitely agree this lockdown is not the one like it is I, it's just like I think we've been in it for so long now it's it's like you're itching to get out are you like watching anything on Netflix like what are you doing to pass your time when you're not doing sessions <laughs> I've literally watched everything on Netflix. Um, I've been I binge watch like all of the toughest prisons. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think me and my boyfriend just sit and watch them like all day. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like anything crime documentary is just mm-hmm. like keep very, very um yeah, I just it gives me something to do. <laughs> I love them. Have you watched the Cecil Hotel? I've not actually that's like oh one of the God. what is it good it's so good honestly I'm like the same as you any like crime stuff or stuff to do with like weird I don't want to say like me- messed up stories like weird, but <laughs> yeah like weird true crime is so good honestly it is so good it is like loads of plot twists I don't want to ruin mm. anything but definitely give it a watch oh, that, yeah I will have you um it. have you been watching Drag Race I have, yeah. Have, have. you? Yeah. Who, do you, who do you want to win? Who's your favourite? Well, I've actually, so I've only recently like found out about it, which is really yeah. weird. Yeah, same. It's all over Instagram and like loads of my friends watch it. Um, but I've been watching the UK one and I just love Tea and Coffee. Like that name. Is yeah. Just so <laughs> yeah, she's so funny. It. It's so much like, I feel like the UK one is is a little bit better than yeah, the, the UK humour just makes it like that that little bit better oh, yeah. I was gonna say elite I was like that's a bit harsh but no it is so good I literally that's all I'm doing at the moment is just sitting and binge watching like if I like something it's gonna be gone done in like a day that's my problem <laughs> um so how has your job and career changed during lockdown like with songwriting I'm guessing it's the writing aspect hasn't changed too much um, I, I mean, like, I'm still really lucky that we get to do Zoom sessions. Like, mm. a lot of people, obviously, their jobs are so restricted now. And, like, it's it's been a weird one. Like, when I started doing Zoom sessions, I didn't enjoy it. I thought, this mm. is just too weird. Like, it's awkward. We're talking over each other. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, some years would just get lost in, like, bad connections. So... But once you get the hang of it, it actually is, it kind of suits me like so much better now. Like I don't need to leave my flat. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> from here, but I do miss like human interaction and just being able to, able to like go into the studio and you definitely like vibes change when you're actually in the room. So that's kind of the only thing that I really miss. And obviously live shows is mm-hmm. like non-existent at the minute. So yeah, like that's kind of the only thing yeah the human interaction is the worst bit like you can't it's so hard to bounce off people like through a screen especially when you're saying like with the delays and if there's like connection issues it just like it gets you off to like an awkward start (laughs) if like if like somebody's mic isn't working or yeah it's always like someone's wi-fi is like really bad but once you're in the session and like everything's going a bit more smoothly then it kind of works a lot better so yeah that's been very we're very lucky that we have zoom (laughs) yeah for sure I don't know what anybody was doing like if this was what 20 I don't know I don't know when like computers were invented but if this is before technology and this would be 10 100 times worse because there's nothing to do and so you started playing at like London venues um and like doing small gigs and stuff and now you've gone on to do like latitude and huge festivals supporting huge artists how did that come across how did you take that huge leap like I have no clue how how that whole part of the industry works how you just grow so quick yeah I I suppose it's just like any opportunity that comes up like you just take it and you run with it but I mean like 
just definitely like Instagram and things like that that comes in so handy like when you're just mingling with other artists especially at the minute obviously we we don't have like that can just go to a show and then try your luck <laughs> like, yeah. manager and be like can you have me on the show um so yeah like staying in touch with people and like just creating those like good connections and I mean like every gig that I done like I would make the most out of it and make sure that I spoke to everybody afterwards and like you never know who's in the crowd so never ever literally yeah. it is crazy like you never know who's watching yeah literally like, that's why you have to make every performance like really good <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so yeah did somebody approach you so to do like your first festival appearance was it like somebody came to you or so I like I started doing music maybe like 12 years ago now so I was like writing a lot of music and then I've I done a show um in the Isle of Wight the Isle of Wight festival and I was literally like 13 and and then like just kind of slowly grew my team like I had a manager and then like built a bigger and bigger team had an agent so they would like book all of my festivals and then yeah like since lockdowns happened obviously you can't really do anything yeah, literally I can't wait to just do like a couple festivals have a really really productive like year and just play loads of live shows yeah oh god I bet you can't wait to like get back in front of an audience like as a performer that that is like the buzz I guess you kind of get from it I mean you can still like make and release music but then like that live aspect is like so intimate you can't really recreate that if no yeah. that is one thing I think like everyone's going to be so nervous going back yeah. to recording to doing live shows because it's going to be so out of our depth yeah for sure I yeah I feel like even I've seen loads of memes about it it's like <laughs> the first time you go to see your friends everybody's going to be like it's like hi I'm Dave yeah hi and there's this meme I saw the other day it's so funny it's like they've basically got an episode of like university challenge or something like cut everybody up and so it's like hi <laughs> that's li- I feel like that's actually gonna how ha- going to be how it's gonna be because like the only people I've really been speaking to are over zoom and like I do live with my boyfriend which I'm very lucky but I feel like even having a normal conversation let alone like singing in front of <laughs> people like it sounds <laughs> actually, yeah, terrifying <laughs> even like yeah like you said like I feel like social anxiety has definitely been such like it's taking taking over a lot of people's lives because of how like no one speaks to anyone now so it'll be crazy but I can't wait (laughs) yeah it'll be good in the end it'll be worth it 100% um so you moved from Surrey you used to live in Surrey you grew up in Surrey and then you moved to London so was it because of the opportunities that you wanted to make the move like it's quite a big thing moving like to London it's quite a scary place so I've actually moved back so that was like a year ago or like over a year ago and then I moved back to Berkshire which is like just outside Surrey so I wanted to be like it was like the decision in lockdown of just I felt like there wasn't really anything like there was no greenery, there's no like, mm. you can't go for nice walks, and I just needed the scenery, so I moved back here, um, I've just moved in with my boyfriend for the first time, so, mm-hmm. but yeah, like London is definitely like, if you want to be any, in anything creative, like it's the perfect place to be, and you're like constantly surrounded by creatives, and like my sessions will always be in London so mm-hmm. but obviously everything's changed into Zoom now so yeah, <laughs> I don't need- literally <laughs> um but yeah yeah I feel the same like I used to live in Surrey and then I moved to London and like our view is like of buildings and it I just crave like walking with trees and like it's so going nice. on walks and seeing <laughs> nature like I miss it so much but it is definitely a place for opportunities I feel like even yeah. people like if you're in a coffee shop you might overhear somebody talking about I don't know oh, yeah. what to do, music <laughs> presenting performing and like you just take those chances I guess but I do miss yeah. it this is like the most exciting thing I wanted to ask you about you supported Khalid on his European tour which is like considering how young you are that is insane that you've achieved so much so young how how did it feel like when you got that call or when that was all happening for the first time 
Um, I remember I was like in bed and then my manager called me and was like, you're supporting Khalid in two weeks. And I was like, right. right. <laughs> <Get on with him." laughs> my life out. Um, but yeah, it was crazy. Like hearing about the opportunity in the first place was like, I couldn't believe it was actually happening. Um, and then obviously the actual tour was like unbelievable. I still go through all of my memories and I'm like, oh my God, get me back on. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> but it was amazing. He was lovely. His whole team were like so nice. And considering how successful he is, he's like the most yeah. humble person. So it was great. It was so good. <laughs> such an unreal opportunity, I guess. But it's such like a, was it like a starstruck moment where you kind of like, I couldn't imagine how it would feel working with somebody so like big and well respected in the industry and you're just put in front of them. Like you want to impress yeah. them. <laughs> I feel like, especially because we're quite like, we're literally the same age. So like, I don't know, there was something, it was like, he was so nice and so welcoming that all the nerves just kind of went as soon as I met him but I was definitely really starstruck I was like I listen to your album like all the time <laughs> yeah. so every day I'm a massive fan <laughs> yeah like I was trying not to let him know that I know everything about him <laughs> yeah oh my god that's that's the thing that I I think don't they say like never meet your idols like I'd be so scared yeah. to slip up like I know the name of your first dog no no I don't like what am I saying <laughs> I feel like I just like freak out but you forget how young these musicians are like you're so young you're set I feel like it can sound quite patronizing can't it when people are like oh you're such a baby you're so young like you're older than me but um <laughs> you forget how young the industry kind of is at the moment like I remember Dua Lipa well I found out how old she was the other day she's only like 26 I swear everyone is so young but it kind of makes it nice that you can like form friendships with people and kind of relate yeah, it's definitely nice when you have like a, a, like someone in your like safe wavelength as well. Like you're you listen to the same music, you're like into the same artist. So yeah, it definitely makes it easier. Yeah, who are you into at the moment, like artist wise? I really love Tate McRae. She's so good. Yeah. I love her song Rubber Band. I've been listening to that so much. I feel like she just gives me really sad <laughs> like yeah. pop vibes. <laughs> yeah, I like that and inspiration outside of music do you have somebody that you like look up to that's not music based um I would say like probably have to be like my mom or like yeah. someone, a strong female in my life <laughs> I am always amazed we were actually I was talking to my boyfriend earlier about it how musicians write like how do you come up with what you write and I know people a lot of the time say it's like what's around them and their family but like how do you actually sit down and like put it all into words that's what I, I don't know I kind of change it like every time I write it kind of depends who I'm writing with as well like I have like my group of people who I know that I write really well with and it will be like writing with your mates like you yeah. kind of have a laugh and you forget that you're writing mm -hmm. and then it all just happens really naturally but I suppose like you start with like either a melody or a specific lyric and then you just kind of build everything around that and I like to do stuff quite like organically so start on a piano or like start on a guitar I feel like there's a there's like a drum loop just going around it gets a bit yeah. tired especially on zoom yeah I like that so do, when musicians write is it always with an instrument they usually start or like do you would you ever just start with a blank piece of paper and like no music in your mind like I have I find it so interesting because I'm so like unmusical so like how <laughs> you even come up with it in the first place but like the whole method it would never just be like you just write like a on a bit of paper yeah like literally like I've been writing so I never write on paper like I never write all my lyrics down but I really wanted to and I, I started like since I've done zoom sessions mm -hmm. um so yeah like I suppose if you have a concept or like if the producer that you're working with has like an idea then they'll play it and then you build on that mm -hmm. but it must be so weird like I don't know like all my friends like they don't really understand they're like what's you write like you're in zoom and you write song yeah. <laughs> like, weird concept like yeah honestly like <laughs> I find it incredible but I guess it's like when you have a talent or you do something a lot of the time people don't understand it and then you're kind of just there like it comes so naturally to you it's like when I, I do art 
I've always done art my whole life and I remember at school people would just like sit and watch I'm like what are you doing yeah. like it's not that yeah. impressive but I like, people... really interesting. like really? I, yeah, like, I done GCSE art and I'm not good at art <laughs> <laughs> it's fun and I remember seeing this girl who's literally amazing at like drawing and I just thought wow like I could not bring myself like I cannot draw yeah. and good so yeah talent it, it baffles <laughs> me I'm like why are you so interested but then I guess when you can't do something you're so intrigued by it. it's like kind of the grass is always greener don't know if that's the yeah. quote but there um so when you're not performing writing coming up with music doing your doing your thing what are you doing what do you like to do like hobbies mm, I like I, I really love like I don't know like self-care like I love a self-care evening I feel like especially in lockdown like I just have made it like my priority to like get the best skincare get like all yeah. my stuff I just I don't know I have such a like passion for it I think if I wasn't a musician I would definitely be something in like health or like beauty or something mm-hmm. but yeah like I don't know there's I feel like everyone's come up with all of these hobbies and I'm just like <laughs> yeah know, like, <laughs> just write and then watch literally people are like yeah I'm running you know like 5k a yeah. day and I'm like knitting my dog like a coat and I'm like I'm literally sat all day on my bed yeah, looking fun. through Urban Outfitters and like do you ever go okay I want to know if this is just me do you ever go on like right move and look at like all the really big houses that you can't yeah. <laughs> it's such a I guilty pleasure that. it's like it's definitely like manifesting isn't it oh. Are you into manifesting? I watch TikTok a lot. That's definitely what I do in my pastime. Yeah, I feel like um, everyone. Yeah, I, 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 I'm very interested in it because I feel like it actually works. I just don't have yeah. the time to write down. 100%. <laughs> I could literally talk about it all day. Like, I, I keep contemplating, do I want to make a video about, like, manife- manifesting for people that don't believe in it? But then I'm like, they're not going to watch that. But I feel like it's so... No, it's definitely you- true. Yeah, do you feel like you ever like visualized where you were going to be now? Do you think that when you were younger? Like I was thinking the other day, like when I was younger, all I want, all I wanted was to like live in a flat, like with my boyfriend, like just have like maybe get a dog. I'm not at that stage yet, <laughs> but yeah, like I, I definitely think like when you vision something and you want it to happen, then and you believe in it enough, then it will happen. Mm. It's kind of like the law of attraction, isn't it? definitely I feel like you make you make it happen like subconsciously I want to know how it all works that's another yeah, thing science. <laughs> it's probably something scientific that's also not yeah. what and and you started so young did you what was it like like being such a young woman girl you were like 14 right when you started writing yeah how was it growing up kind of with I guess you could say the pressures of because music's quite like an out there thing when you're a musician you it's quite public how was it being so young and doing what you're doing um it was really good like I feel like it definitely led me in the right direction obviously I love doing it um but when I was younger like I lost a lot of my child like not childhood but like I suppose like going to parties in like year nine or like you know like just those little things that you kind of do and then you do notice it when you get to like I don't know 22 and you've got like one friend yeah <laughs> and, like all of your friends are in music but like it was amazing like I was so lucky to have like opportunities so young and be able to just sing and like do what I really wanted to do mm-hmm. and I feel like it kind of gave me that step where like I knew exactly where I wanted to be I knew what I wanted to do I didn't need to figure it out yeah did you go like, to university no I went to college like one year and it was a diploma it was at ACM in Guildford (laughs) I'm from Guildford that's so funny (laughs) yeah that's such a weird (laughs) one but yeah and it was like that was so fun like that was like my one year of like really doing like going to parties like you know being young and then after that I was I was straight back into writing and being an artist Mm, it sounds quite similar like uh, I you didn't go to uni I'm guessing because you wanted to focus you feel like you could do it without uni yeah yeah like focus on what you're doing and I feel like I took I took very well I didn't go to uni and I wanted to do presenting so I've tried to pursue it but 
I think like people don't realize it's quite lonely when you don't go to uni like all my friends are at uni I'm guessing it was the same for you like everyone goes off to uni and they make new friends and you're just like the girl at home you're like the friend at home and it's like it's good because you're focusing so much on what you love and your career but then it it gets really like lonely and you feel like nobody's really that like interested anymore yeah I feel like there's like there's been times where I felt so out of place and like I don't know like finding friends that have really similar interests is so important because you can be sat with loads of people and just not know what's going on at their uni or not know what's going on in their group of friends because you're like busy grinding (laughs) you're like I don't know what you're talking about but (laughs) I feel like when people go to uni that's their like they're like uni uni like everything revolves around uni and yeah. like I definitely have no clue about how it all works I don't know they're like mocks and they're like modules and I'm like I don't do yeah, exactly. I have no idea do you have like what's your guilty pleasure it could be like something not music related or is there like a musician you love that like you wouldn't want anyone to know you listen to I oh I don't know I feel like there's nothing like guilty about it but <laughs> definitely listen I listen to Taylor Swift a lot but like that's not guilty like that's, no. that's <laughs> um, I don't know I don't really I, I to be honest I listen to the same like three artists like I'm so I need to like branch out a little bit because I listen to the same songs over and over but I don't know probably like ABBA or something like I'm obsessed yeah. with ABBA <laughs> everyone loves ABBA you can't say no to ABBA I feel like when you get when you find those like as you said like three artists or three songs or whatever that you love you like I can never let go I feel like I'm the same I just listen to the same playlist and I need to branch out of it (laughs) I need to listen to some new stuff because I just get a bit old um and something I ask all of my guests at the end of the episode is what advice they'd give to people wanting to get into the industry or people that are already in the industry but want to expand what they're doing I would say like use your resources so use like Instagram use your socials to like build up your kind of brand and like you know what you love like songs that you love even do some like covers if you're into singing and then that's what you want to do um and yeah like just take every opportunity like you never know who's watching so do like when we can finally do shows (laughs) as many as you can let me know when you do your first one and I would like to come yes definitely. you actually perform and um, but that's oh that's all that's it thank you so much for coming and chatting to me today it's been so lovely it's been so interesting to find out about the music world a bit more thank you for having me